What is going on, guys? Grave here today. I talk about a lot of different things, kind of just uh, some stuff in general that I wanted to kind of bring up. Some things I wish would get looked at by Treyarch. You know, that's not skill-based matchmaking. I know that's a hot topic right now in the community. There's a lot of other things in game I think that could help out just in general, overall gameplay, that kind of thing. I kind of want to bring you guys this gameplay because it's, I'm running around with a 1911 playing hardcore. I have a buddy that likes to play hardcore, so usually I hop on and play with him. We got into a pretty decent lobby for once. So it wasn't a lobby with all the hundreds. Uh, I couldn't believe it. So, you know, we had a good time running around with a pistol, trying to rank up some of these guns now that, you know, double weapon XP is going on. A lot of my secondaries aren't completely maxed out, so I thought it would be a good time to run around with a 1911 pistol. And it's sad when the 1911 pistol is better than the FFAR in hardcore. But anyway, um, so I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay in the background. Like I said, I'm just going to talk about some different topics of things that I wish that the Treyarch would look at. Things that aren't skill-based matchmaking. The first thing would be the score streak system. I still don't think this is ever going to get changed, uh, but... I had a glimmer, and I do mean a glimmer, just a small glimmer of hope the other day when I saw that the Pro League actually has the option now to turn off uh, score streaks, not resetting on death. So the Pro League players, while they were practicing, were not running score streaks. They decided to GA them, which was a gentleman's agreement. They all decided we're not going to run score streaks because of the fact that, you know, they don't reset on death. So I understood why they weren't going to do that. It is kind of cheesy in my opinion. You know, I've talked about this several times on the channel. I feel like it's kind of just a participation award. I understand why they wanted to do it because they want everybody to feel like they're getting streaks. But at the same time, it just makes a lot of spam at the end of the game. But with update 1.07, the uh, Pro League now has the option to set score streaks to reset on death. So I thought that was a really gr great thing for them. I think Pro Call of Duty is a lot more entertaining to watch when those kill, uh, kill streaks are available. Now, not every year... They have kill streaks in game. Last year, Modern Warfare, for example, they did not use kill streaks. It's kind of up to the developers, I think. But Treyarch usually does a really good job, in my opinion, with uh, you know how they handle the pro league compared to Infinity Ward. So I was glad to see that was back. And like I said, it did give me a glimmer of hope that we could get some changes, maybe in uh, uh, in multiplayer. I, I would give us about a one percent chance of getting some changes. I still don't think they're going to do anything with this. Um, if Skill-based matchmaking wasn't such a big deal. I think score streaks would be a pretty big topic in the community. They might get a little more leverage with this. I, I'm not sure. I'm kind of curious what you guys think about it. So anything I talk about, of course, in this video, I'm going to go over several topics. Like I said, just leave me a comment with your thoughts uh, down in the comment section. Of course, another thing that I think a lot of people have been talking about as of late that could be changed is shotguns. Uh, shotguns and secondaries, I was never a big fan of this. I wasn't a fan of it. And I think it was Modern Warfare 2 where there were secondaries. I may be thinking it wrong. I think that was right. I've played so many Call of Duty titles since COD 2. I can't keep up with them all. But um, shotgun secondaries are absolutely crazy because in this game, you can have a gun that has maxed out attachments with a gunfighter. So you make some of these guns absolute lasers. Then you actually have a secondary uh, when it comes to shotguns that have some crazy range and, in my opinion, are better than some of the primaries in game. I'm not sure why they decided to go with the shotgun secondary idea. Uh, these things are absolutely nuts. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced them in hardcore. Uh, like I said, when I play with my buddy, when we play hardcore, we do a lot of this to rank up guns, to get camos, that kind of thing, you know, when we're not playing normal core. And shotguns are good in core, but in hardcore, they're even crazier. Uh, so it's just, to me, I think they need to be looked at. If you're going to leave them, and I'm assuming they're going to leave them as secondaries, they should be tweaked a little. I still think they're too strong, even though they have done a little bit here and there. Of course, we are going to get a big weapon uh, change our weapon tuning with uh, season one. Of course, Tony Flame has already gone on to Twitter talking about it. He didn't really go into detail what's going to change. I'm assuming it's probably going to be the AUG, the M16. Could be the shotguns. He said the meta has been the same for a little over a month now and they wanted to change it up. I understand they want to change the meta. In my opinion, once again, I believe you should buff weapons uh, unless they're just way too overpowered. You might make a few small tweaks to them to kind of knock them down a bit. But I understand they want to change the meta up, but when it comes to either, you know, public matches or if I watch the pro league, I like to see a lot of variety. And usually when it comes to public matches, there's not a lot of variety. Most core matches I get in, even hardcore, I've seen it as of late. Um, most everyone's running M6 or NOG. I mean, it, it's crazy, even in hardcore, you know, where everything's a one shot kill besides the FFAR. <laughs> Take my shot at the FFAR again for hardcore, but, uh, um, but you, you go to core, I mean, the AUG and the M16 can burst you up close, burst you at mid-range, one burst you at long range is pretty crazy. Uh, and I, I think a lot of this stuff needs to be looked at. 
Um, I'm assuming we'll get some pretty big changes. I hope they don't just absolutely, uh, you know, it's kind of just obliterate things like the AK and the, you know, Krieg. And, unless they're going to make some of the other ARs really good because we don't have a lot of options. The QBZ is not bad. Not my personal favorite, but not bad. It's just a decent gun. But overall, I think the shotgun secondaries could be looked at. I don't think they'll ever change, you know, them back to a, you know, either using them as a primary or not using them. I think it's going to stay as a secondary. Uh, Treyarch seems to love their shotguns. I can think back in Black Ops 1. I don't remember the name of that one shotgun. It was the pump, but it was really good. I used to run around with it some. So um, another thing that, you know, kind of been uh, talked about a lot lately has also been visibility. Visibility in this game, at times to me, is worse than Modern Warfare. And that's saying a lot because Modern Warfare's visibility was absolutely awful. I'm not sure if it's the new engine they're using. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, we ne used to never have this problem in Call of Duty. I'm not sure if it's the maps. Um, in my opinion, these still look a lot like something the Infinity Ward would make. A lot like, Tre uh, not like Treyarch would make. A lot thing, it looks like a map that, you know, Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer would do. I'm a still a, a big believer that a lot of these maps were Sledgehammer's maps before Treyarch had to take over. So they kind of just had to, you know, kind of go with what maps were available because they got handed this project, you know, with pretty much saying, uh, you got a year to make this game. So. I understand if they had to use some of Sledgehammer's maps that were already in-game, already implemented, that they were using. But at the same time, I'm not sure what the problem is. I don't know if it's the color scheme. I don't know if it's the new engine they're using. But visibility is a, a, a struggle on some maps. Uh, the, what's kind of ridiculous to me is even you can use some of the flashlights in-game. Uh, you know, some of the things that will show you reveal distance with a little green dot over enemies' heads, depending on what color you use, uh, you know, for your enemy players' names. And it's still hard to find enemies at times. There's still spots on the map where they just will not show up even when you're ads um, Overall, I'm hoping they can continue to adjust this. I know a lot of times they will add glow around the you know, player silhouettes to help out. But the big thing I think uh, that I'm really looking forward to is new maps. I'm kind of curious to see if, you know, when Treyarch's making some of these DLC maps, we're going to get Raid back. Of course, you know, they talked about them all in the pines. You know, some of these maps we're going to get in the future. I'm curious to see if when Treyarch is, you know, I'm, I'm confident that they're fully designing these maps if the visuals look different. Uh, I'm going to be kind of curious to see. If they do not, then that's going to kind of show us that it's probably the engine they're using. You know, this updated engine they're using in-game. I know it's a lot easier to see on PC because you can change a lot of the color settings. Here on console, we really don't have a lot of options. Now, of course, it's going to depend on what you play on. I do play on a BenQ monitor. This one is a little bit older, so it doesn't have some of the color settings some of the newer monitors may have. Um... The other thing is, of course, you can change a few things in game, like, you know, I have the green names over the enemy's head. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Uh, it does help, but it's not perfect by any means either. It's not like it used to be with older cards, where you actually could see people at all, you know, ranges on the map, no matter, you know, what was going on, or, you know, where they were, or, you know, what map you were on, or anything like that. This game has some cartel and satellite, and a few others, in my opinion, are really, really hard to see people on at times. Anyway, guys, let me comment with your thoughts. Let me know what you, uh, you know, kind of think about some of this stuff. Like I said, I know skill-based matchmaking is a big topic, but there's some other things in the game, in my opinion, that Treyarch could look at and work on. And let me know what you think about the 1911 pistol. If you have not used it in hardcore yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun running around just using this pistol. And, of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and the affiliate here, GT Racing. Uh, they're having a big Christmas sale right now, so go give them a look. The affiliate link is down in the description. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.